Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing Tyler Perry. TV. But more specifically, movies that Tyler Perry has written. Obviously, Tyler Perry has achieved a lot of success in his um, filming, acting, and writing career. But despite that, people still do not fuck with his movies. And if you've visited my channel at all, um, I do talk about Tyler Perry movies here and there. And oftentimes it's, it's not it's not very good. Today we're going to be discussing, I guess, why people don't like his movies and kind of talk about not each movie, we're not gonna be discussing every single one. But I guess like, for me, what are like a few key highlights, movies that I actually enjoy watching, but for me that are still problematic. So I, and I'll be honest, I did zero to know I won't say zero research I always gotta like have an idea of what we're gonna be talking about before talking about it so we're both not in here blind but in doing mild research I've found and just like honestly hearing from other people and it's mostly people within the black community that you'll find has issues with Tyler Perry movies um his biggest critique being that his movies depict black women always in anguish are always in uh, scenarios that aren't the best. I've also heard the critique that the villain of the movie or the antagonist of the movie uh, is always depicted as a dark skinned black man. Which if you know anything about colorism in the black community, that type of depiction is very harmful. And to say that he does that often you know what I mean? For me personally, my critiques are, they more revolve around the the takeaway or the moral of the story. Like, yes, the writing sometimes is very, and the acting sometimes is very. And if you've seen any of my videos regarding movies, and I do talk about Tyler Perry's movies, um, on my channel not often enough to where that's like my whole thing but you know I have before and majority of the time I rarely talk about the writing itself it's more so the concept or the moral of the story that I typically have a problem with when it comes to Tyler Perry's films because although the wigs are definitely wigging they oh my god what is that yeah. oh my god I'm more so um, more so today we're going to be talking about, I guess, the morality of some Tyler Perry movies. We're not going to be discussing all of them. I'll be honest. We will more than likely only discuss the more popular ones or ones that I have seen. If there's any that stand out to you or any that I don't mention in the video that you would like to talk about, we definitely can. But in the meantime, we're just going to take it back from the very beginning. We're going to be starting off today with Diary of a Mad Black Woman. So the title itself... <laughs> <laughs> the title itself is definitely something um this one we're introduced to Medea and we have Helen well let me get the cast set up for you so we have Tyler Perry who is playing damn near everybody um no I'm kidding but he plays Medea he plays Joe he plays Brian who is a lawyer on uh are in the like in the Medea universe I guess you could say uh Tyler Perry plays I guess like I don't want to say himself, but it's a character that I guess is closest to himself. Like he's not doing drag and he's not wearing prosthetics. It's just Tyler Perry. And we have Helen played by Kimberly Elise, which I'm hoping I'm pronouncing her last name right. And I'm obsessed with her. Like, I think she's just very pretty and her acting is actually really, really good. Um, and we also have Char Charles played by Steve Harris, Orlando played by Shamar Moore. And I think we're just gonna kind of like stop right there. So basically, this was like, for me, like, it's called Diary of a Mad Black Woman, which sounds like she's gonna be unhinged and unjustified. But oh boy, is our character Helen justified in being upset and angry? I kind of wish it wasn't a mad black woman specifically. Like, yeah, she's a, a, a woman. Yes, yeah, she's black. And yes, yeah, she's mad. But I do feel like that kind of ties into the angry black woman stereotype and just based off of the title alone. Now, if you actually take the time to watch the movie, and I, I've, I've seen the play once, so I can't really uh, 
give you too much on that but if you've actually watched the movie Helen's character is very much justified so Helen is married to Charles and the very beginning their relationship is very strained like they're very clearly going through some problems he's having an affair and it's not so much a secret affair um but Charles has got to be the most villainous villain I have ever seen in a movie like I don't want to say Thanos level but it's 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 something but basically charles is straight up having an affair and the 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 height of the movie for me uh is the very beginning and i'll say one thing taylor perry knows how to start a movie helen comes home and she has all new shit in her closet and all her old shit is getting taken out and she's like oh my god like he's like you know doing being nice being a husband getting me all this new shit and like she's like real excited about it because at first she sees her stuff like out in the front and she's like what the fuck is going on and then she goes into her closet and she has a maid y'all they have a maid like they have like external help i have daphne and, and she's no help in the slightest but i digress the maid is like oh yes like i don't know what's going on but he told me to take all your old stuff out and now all this new shit is here and she's like oh my god so she puts on a dress goes downstairs is happy to see him he gets home and this is like the shittiest possible way to break up with somebody charles is like what are you doing here another woman walks in brenda so brenda walks in and she's like what is she doing wearing my dress gagged that is not how you break up with somebody charles what the actual fuck of course i would be angry in this situation because damn bro break up with me properly packing up all her shit and having it out in the front is crazy work crazy business he just calmly drops the bomb that he has kids with brenda like this is the bullshit that i'm talking about villainess just bad not a good dude at all and so he quite literally drags her out of the house because how do you respond in a situation like that other than hysterically because I don't know what I would do I would I would have to leave the premises otherwise nobody's leaving the premises they're leaving the premises in an ambulance we would be turning names into hashtags you know what I mean mothers will be wearing blacks at the funeral like it would have gotten really bad if i were to be in a situation like that yes he quite literally drags her out of the house and he is like he drags her out of the house there's a u-haul guy there shamar who is shamar moore uh, uh who is playing orlando who has the most horrendous wig that you have ever seen and they should have honestly just left him bald he's so handsome bald so handsome bald but they gave they gave him a wig and you know what it's 2005 these days if you're wearing a wig like that what's going on because they have innovated wigs so well in the past oh i guess 20 years in the past 20 years there's it's no excuse but anyways he drops her off they have a very bad interaction and she's like she ends up stealing the truck actually he doesn't drop her off she kicks him out of the truck and she kicks him out uh i don't even know where in the road she drives herself to medea's and that's kind of like where the movie takes off she learns herself she ends up running into orlando again they end up getting together and they're vibing and stuff and she finds out that charles was shot in court and he's like he's like shot he's like bad like he's unconscious he's not responsive and it comes down to whether or not um they'll you know keep him on life support or not like and so it's a matter of him pulling through at this point and then if he, even if he does pull through like will he be able to walk these are all questions that you know need answers so helen is kind of in this position of jumping in as legally his wife to say hey keep him on life support you know we're gonna push through this and brenda's bitch ass folded like a damn piece of origami and was like pull the plug on him and luckily he got lucky that helen was legally still his wife because she was able to tell the doctors to you know keep him on life support so he has a, a fighting chance but this bitch was like prepared to pull the plug on him like brenda so helen helps charles recover and 
you know, and during helping him recover, like, one, he's still treating her like a dick. Like, he's like, where's Brenda? Where are my kids at? Like, why are you here? Why are you even here? And then she just snapped. She went from being a caregiver and trying to, like, genuinely take care of him. But I think she still had all that animosity just barreled down in her. Because mind you, he ha he cheated on her, had a kid on her, dragged her out of their house, and she just snapped. She snapped. She starved him. She damn near drowned him. She belittled him. Like I said, she I feel like she needed to heal from that because that is traumatic as shit. That whole thing from one, him dropping the bomb at her, that he's kicking her out. Get Like, this is how you tell somebody you want a divorce? Like, no papers. I felt like it would have already been low if he had papers served to her, but I would rather that than you bring the other woman into the home, my home, throw all my shit out in the front. Like, what is going on? Um, but yeah, and I feel like the, this was one of the more decent Tyler Perry movies. Like I said, the, the title itself was like kind of, hmm, what's going on? At this point, being that this was like Tyler Perry's first movie, I guess you could say, or at least it's the first movie that I've seen. Um, and like, according to Google, this is the first movie, like film, not a play, but a film. So we, this is our first time really seeing, um, a villain that is, <clears throat> I guess, dark skin more melanated as you might say um so I that isn't something that I had initially clocked I barely clocked the diary of a mad black woman but also I was like how old when this came out that was just the most villainous villainous thing I've ever seen in my life though um and like I said it was one of Tyler Perry's more enjoyable movies I think because it was like the first one out the gate it was like a cast you know what I mean talking about this right here never forget about that melanated solid it was very just i guess entertaining with all the dramatics uh so yeah and i feel like this is where it's like a matter of preference and niche where it's like if he writes dramas and writes about like family drama and stuff i feel like it's fine i think it's instances where it's like okay he his movies are predominantly black so it's like it kind of becomes confusing where it's like not confusing but it's like how do you want him to write his very particular niche and it's like I get that people are like we need more representation of black women in safe spaces being soft and being depicted that way in films and I completely agree with that I just don't know if that's something that can be put on one person whose niche seems or appears to be drama you know what I mean so like that's one thing that I'll give Tyler Perry like you know grievance on or not grievance well I'll I'm understanding of that. However, there are some movies that Tyler Perry has done where it's not just black women in such shitty situations because, you know, people are in shitty situations all the time. And if your cast is going to be made up of people of color, then it is what it is. That's just what it's going to be. For me, it's Tyler Perry movies that have the worst morals or more has the worst moral of the story that phrase right there like the takeaway of the story is bullshit and I feel this way uh with temptation confessions of a marriage counselor this one stars Journey Smollett playing Judith Robbie Jones playing Harley Lance Gross playing Bryce Kim Kardashian is in here too I remember everybody was on her ass when this came out because the acting was you know what I mean I felt like she did okay for somebody that doesn't act we have brandy uh playing melinda uh ella joyce playing sarah so judith and bryce are a young couple they move into the city they're starting their prospective careers all they have known as far as relationships and romantic relationships go is each other so that being said situations like that i feel like could either be really really good or really really bad judith and bryce were the latter unfortunately in that situation so judith is working at a matchmaking company and bryce is working at a retail pharmacy or like a he's working at a pharmacy because his goal is to own his own pharmacy. So they're both, they're both young, they both have their own goals, and they're just really starting out in life. And like I said, make or break scenario, make or break situation, like growing like that with one person that you've known your whole life and the only person that you've known romantically, and that goes for both of them, could be this beautiful thing, or it could be something else entirely different. Judith ends up meeting Harley 
at her work harley is like the equivalent of mark zuckerberg he's made like some sort of social media platform and so he's rich you got your money he got money get and basically he's trying to get what he does like social media or whatever and mix it with matchmaking and essentially they end up getting involved romantically of course judith and bryce are already having marital problems before uh harley even comes into the picture so that doesn't really help and essentially the issues that judith and bryce are having so i'll give you a few examples so you have one and I, I, I'm giving the examples only specifically in comparison to what she's experiencing with Harley, who she eventually starts having an affair with. So you have Judith and Bryce. So you have a situation. One, Bryce forgets her birthday for the second year in a row. Two, uh, Bryce is encouraging of her dreams, but I feel like he's being very, I guess you could say, I guess you could say realistic about it. Like he's like, yeah, you know, like your job sucks, but just grind it out. And then in the next decade or so, in the next 10 years or so, you know, then you can start your own practice. And then, you know, we're just getting settled in. Like, it's like encouraging and discouraging at the same time. Like he's not telling her that her dreams are impossible, but he's also like, she's expressing that she's like miserable at her job and he's telling her it's going to be a good while before she should even be thinking about starting her practice as a marriage counselor which honestly how you gonna have an affair and try to be a marriage counselor like there is levels to this shit where it's like <sighs> but i'm digressing I don't need to be counseling nobody's marriages because i'm digressing but because like as much as bryce was problematic she also could have done better too at a lot of things um you know not cheating with the fuck um but i'm digressing so anyways so there's also a scenario where bryce and judith go out to dinner there's a group of boys speaking disrespectfully to judith and she of course speaks up for herself and defends herself but bryce is like just get in the car come on just go let's just go um and doesn't really say anything about it doesn't really say anything to her about it doesn't really defend her either and his logic was they could have had a gun like they could have you know they could have hurt us and she felt like she wasn't safe which i can totally understand i can understand both perspectives perspectives of this situation and because as much as i would want my partner to defend me in a situation like that one because i feel like that also sends out a message to you're allowing other people to disrespect your partner and i don't care what situation it is if there's a situation where i have to defend my husband like if some girl like for example if a girl is like putting hands on him and he can't hear her back i mean he could but hopefully the dude i'm with wouldn't want to hit her back i jump in tag me in bookie i got you because that's not gonna fly and I would also want him to defend me in situations where if a man or somebody was approaching me crazy, like I know he has my back. I understand both perspectives because Bryce's character wasn't, he wasn't an awful husband. He just like, like um, I say he wasn't an awful husband because I don't believe that at all that he was intentionally trying to hurt his wife, hurt his wife emotionally and make her feel sh like shit. I don't think that that, is what his intentions were at all. I think he did love her, but I feel like he was very comfortable in the relationship, but you should be comfortable in the relationship, but I feel like you also shouldn't take your partner for granted. Like you treat them like how you did from day one. Otherwise, like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, ugh. Like I feel like you should never stop courting your partner. You should never stop pursuing your partner. Otherwise, you know, it could feel very mundane. Another thing that Bryce did that I thought was pretty bad, she was like trying to be, trying to spice up their uh, intimate life, I guess you could say. And to be fair, and this is where I say Judith has a, an issue too, because she didn't communicate these things very well. Like in her mind, she was like, oh, like I want to experience this, this and this with my husband. But she didn't really communicate that. Instead, she just really jumped for it, which for uh, Bryce is understandably like, what the fuck? Like, why are you doing this? But at the same time, it's like he wasn't really tuned into her enough to be like, okay, like clearly you want to try something new clearly like there's something that we need to we need to establish we need to figure out so with harley everything that bryce is doing wrong harley is doing right which for judith does seem like you know very nice uh given that it, it was something that she was lacking in her current marriage 
for every scenario I just named, Harley has one with Judith in the opposite direction that she is like, that makes her feel excited and that makes her feel loved and appreciated. Her husband forgot her birthday. Harley sends her flowers to her desk for her birthday because they briefly, briefly discussed it. Like at one point, Harley was like, how old are you? And she's like, oh, I'll be da -da -da, uh, this Thursday. Like my birthday is this Thursday. He gets her flowers. Like from that brief conversation, he like sends her flowers. Her her husband, Bryce, has known her their entire lives. They've known their their sandbox lovers. They've known each other since they were kids. And this motherfucker has forgot her birthday two years in a row. Crazy. That is crazy. And I feel like it's one of those things that ties down to love language as well. Whereas like you have these two people, Judith and you have Bryce. They're not bad people, despite Judith cheating. Like just omit that. Before she cheated, they're both not bad people. They're both very good people. They they're doing the best that they can. None of them are intentionally trying to have anybody fucked up. They're just doing the best that they can. That doesn't necessarily mean that they should have been together that one was so weird about the movie too that kind of didn't make any sense because I'm like how does she want to be a marriage counselor and she can't properly communicate to her husband that there is something lacking in their marriage to the point where she feels like she needs to get it from somewhere else because let me tell you something one thing that I cannot stand is somebody that cheats is a cheater because there are so many conversations that could be had prior to like it with their instance like even when he forgot her birthday she didn't say anything she kind of just was like you know she she didn't say anything she was sad about it but she just didn't say anything to him I would have been like look you need to understand how crucial this is for me as far as how you're giving love and how I'm receiving it right now it's not lining up you know because he thinks that he's loving her by being loyal going to work you know what I mean that type of thing I guess you could say um which is great that's like a good default he he has a solid motherfucking base like Bryce is so good but there are things that I feel makes a relationship a relationship and there are things that take it from being oh this is my friend who's a really good person to this is my husband that knows how to love me and look after me and is the shit and with Bryce I feel like that kind of fell short because like forgetting her birthday and for her that's obviously something that's important to her because it meant a lot whenever Harley got her flowers like she was like excited at first because she thought that it was from her husband like she was like I thought he forgot but he remembered like she's excited about this and then is disappointed when it, she finds out it's not from her husband like she wants this energy from him but also at the same time it's like there are things that like you shouldn't have to say but I feel like if you're if you're with somebody who is a genuinely good person but there are just certain things to them that don't matter as much to them as they do to you you have to make an effort to talk about it like even when it came down to their sex life when Judith was like hey I want to mix it up like you know let's be wild about it he was like no ew the fuck we're gonna go have sex in bed like we always do and uh, it was a wasted opportunity for her to be like she just jumped like she like literally jumped him in the kitchen when if that's not how he is and shit if that's not how he operates if that's not his love language and this is now something that she's being introduced to and is now her love language is now something that she wants to explore I feel like they didn't take enough time to verbally discuss that shit and I think that's what was causing the strain like the whole thing with the dudes approaching her to being disrespectful towards her instead of being like like she was just like I don't feel safe right now and then literally like that scene was something else so at this point she knows who Harley is and they vibe or whatever <clears throat> like they're, they're they they find out that they have a lot in common as they're working together she finds out that he's running out of park the same park that she runs at so the night that that happens she's like I'm gonna go to the park with the intention of running into him which as soon as that starts to happen, you need to have a conversation. Duh. The second you start seeking out attention, even if you feel that it's harmless, that is something that can easily that can easily escalate if you don't handle it carefully. And so Judith ends up running into Harley and they're like running with each other. Uh, uh, somebody that's on a bike, a cyclist, a bikes, bike cyclist, a biker. He's riding his bike, bumps into Judith. Judith fucks up her ankle and Harley gets like physically upset at the dude. This is like, mind you, a complete accident. And it was kind of giving, in my opinion, toxic masculinity. But I think it was just supposed to be like a dramatic um, shift from what she was experiencing with her husband to what she's now experiencing with Harley. Like, oh, this is somebody that's going to like, you know, defend me. Like, I feel safe in this situation. I feel protected in this situation. And so 
and I'm speaking solely on Judith. Like, I wouldn't want a dude that, like, flipped the fuck out the way that he did. I would want a dude to probably, like, Bram! Leave her alone! was very clearly an accident um so she ends up going to his house so he can wrap up her ankle or whatever her husband comes and picks her up and he's none the wiser that they have this sort of attraction thing going on and why should he be you know what i mean he his wife is supposed to be his wife they're supposed to be loyal to each other but it's like even so i just personally i feel like if, if your person treats you well and y'all are actually in a good spot meaning that there isn't like a whole crisis going on around you and your day-to-day um on a good day you need to be doing you need to be on your shit okay and that goes for men and women alike anybody that's in a relationship I feel like you should actively be pursuing your partner so it doesn't feel so mundane and there's gonna be mundane days of course but it's like every blue moon throw something throw throw a bone out there damn but it's like for him it was like this consistent thing where it he just wasn't he wasn't getting it right and I felt bad for him I would say I feel bad for Judith but it's like I said it's like I understand I can uh, everything that Judith was experiencing I can understand why she would want a divorce I don't understand why she would want to cheat cheating just for me like is so unnecessary and so avoidable it's fucking ridiculous so everything that Judith was experiencing I can understand wanting her wanting to separate from Bryce I don't understand her wanting to cheat on him that is where I get thrown off every time with this movie um and that is like my main point but I'll continue. So you find out that Melinda, played by Brandy, who is also Bryce's co-worker, is Harley's ex. And Harley, you find out, we find out very quickly that Harley has a lot of shit wrong with him, being that he's abu abusive, he does drugs, um, hard drugs, not the cool kind either, but like hardcore stuff that doesn't grow from the ground, stuff you gotta concoct. So we find this out, and uh, Harley... Melinda reveals that Harley gave her HIV because he was cheating on her. He was abusive with her. And Bryce has put together that Judith and Harley, Judith is with Harley. So he's now found out that Harley is abusive and now has HIV. And so J Bryce is like, goes to save Judith. He ends up getting her out. And the whole movie is being, um, it's not being told as a story, but like that, that's like the whole point. Like that is where, where, where we're learning right now um so in the beginning there's a, a man and a woman they're seeking counseling and the counselor is telling the story of her sister judith which we find out that the counselor is actually judith at the end of the movie but it's this whole story being told it's supposed to be a lesson basically and the lesson in the takeaway by the end of the movie is I'm going to stay with my husband and not have an affair. I'm going to stop the affair and not and not cheat on my husband. I'm going to stay with my husband. When it's just bullshit. That is so fucking bullshit. And this is what frustrates, frustrates me so much about the movie is because Tyler Perry, why in the fuck is that the takeaway? When it's like you actually have two people, two good people. And it's like, I feel like by somebody being a good person, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're good for you or that y'all are compatible in that way. And I think that that's what was so frustrating. And the fact that, it I feel like all of it required a bigger conversation instead of everything that happened one very unrealistic that Judith who wants to be a marriage counselor isn't communicating properly with her husband the things that she wants out of their relationship instead she has an affair huh leaves him for Harley huh what who very clearly has a lot of problems and it's just like it's so frustrating to watch and it's so frustrating to watch the end of the movie because Bryce has remarried, he has kids and a family. Uh, Judith literally has HIV, which like I know like there has been a stigma with HIV and stuff. Um, especially, I don't wanna say especially during this time. Like I know like now, like who is it, Magic Johnson? Like, you know what I mean? Like it's not extremely abnormal, incurable. But it's not like, it's not, it's no longer, especially if you have money, something that's like extremely life threatening. But during this time, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't implied that she was going to die from it or anything. But like, you know what I mean? 
it, it just wasn't giving good vibes. It was giving, my life is over. I'm going to be alone forever. Like, even at some point, Bryce tries to hook up with Melinda, and Melinda then reveals to him, like, no, we can't do that. I have HIV. I can't be with anybody because I have HIV. I'm going to be alone. But it's okay because I've accepted the consequences of being with a man who was cheating on me. Like, huh? Like, at one point, she literally said, she was like, you know, which is like, I get like needing to put your head in a space of healing and in order to heal, you have to forgive. You have to take accountability. There are things that you have to do to keep yourself from fucking jumping. And I think that was what Melinda was doing, where she was like, no, like, it's okay. Like, I'm taking my meds. And I knew that he was out cheating. And so she's, like, almost in a way taking responsibility for that. Um, taking responsibility for her boyfriend cheating on her and giving her um, an STD. But I digress. And it like literally ends with Judith walking by herself, like limping to by herself just after picking up her meds and seeing her ex-husband with his new family. Like such a sad ending and such a shitty takeaway. Like I feel like the takeaway should have been like, for example, when you cut back to the scene of Judith in the counselor's office with the wife who was having an affair Instead of being like, wow, I'm going to end the affair and stay with in my relationship. Instead of being like, wow, I would be like, my takeaway would be like, I'm going to leave my husband and use condoms. Like that, that was my, that was my goddamn motherfucking takeaway. That was, that was my takeaway. I'm going to leave my husband and get tested with my next sexual partner. Like these are my takeaways here. But Tyler Perry's takeaway was forget that y'all are, y'all started off in a good spot. Y'all are both good people. Um, your love languages are completely different. Y'all are no longer compatible. Forget that. You could be out here with an STD and an abusive man. And it's like, and I, I feel like it was a comparison of bars. Like, okay, like the bar could be lower, so I'm going to settle for this situation. And I feel like that's unfair to your partner. That's unfair. It's just not a good situation. I My least favorite thing, I hated that so much. And I really wish that was not the takeaway. I feel similarly about the next movie that we're going to talk about, um, which is Tyler Perry's Acrimony. So in the cast, we have Melinda, Robert, Sarah, June, but really our main focus needs to be Melinda, Robert, and Diana. Um, so they the, the movie goes back and forth between, or doesn't really go back and forth. It, it, it starts off in the present, goes back to the past, back to the back to the present like it does that type of thing so there's multiple actors and actresses for each character so the adult characters are played by or melinda is played by taraji b henson robert is played by lyric bent um and then melinda's character has sisters that we don't really need to get into and then we have crystal stewart played by diana wales so here's the setup and here's a scenario so you have a young melinda who is played by oh that is a unique name a Jonah Alexis essentially here's what goes down so Melinda meets a guy and so let, let's start off <clears throat> Melinda has anger issues point blank bottom line I feel like her character was justified for being upset I don't justify at all how she chose to handle her emotions though um so I'll start off by saying that so you have Melinda she meets Robert uh they're both in school and they start dating uh Melinda's mother passes so she comes into a lot of money through the life insurance policy so she comes into through a lot of money so during this time she's dating Robert and Robert I don't want to say he comes from the wrong side of the tracks or anything, but he just doesn't have money like that, which, you know, what college student does unless they're working like a full time job or something. So he's going to school to be an engineer. He um, he has a, a product that he's made. He's made an invention. It's a battery. I'm still very unclear about what the battery does or what the battery is for. Her sisters are very judgmental of him and his financial situation. They don't really like him very much. They are, her sisters are in like relationships and they eventually get engaged and then married. As with Melinda and Robert, it's a very different situation. So you have, um, like I said, Melinda came into a lot of money. So Robert doesn't have a car he lives far as fuck from her and she is like super supportive of his dreams and stuff and it's like whatever you need like I can help you with it like I have the money let me help you so she gets him a car she gets this man a car doesn't hear for him 
for days. And she buys the car, pays that hoe off. Like he has a car, okay? Doesn't hear from him for days. And so she's just kind of like feeling some type of way because she's like, where are you? Like, where have you been? So he was like, oh, I've just been busy with the battery. Cause like I said, he invented a special battery. And so she was like, okay, but something doesn't feel quite, quite right. So she pulls up to his trailer and there's another girl there who is Diana Wells. So remember that name. So she loses her shit and she basically drives her car into the trailer and uh, in doing so she injures herself so badly that she's ruptured her reproductive organs so she can no longer have kids. Robert comes back, apologizes and is like, you know, I'm so sorry it'll never happen again. They get together. Um, he ends up moving into the house, I believe at some point. Um, they get married. It's like a timeline. And as we're looking at the timeline, we see that her her life insurance policy, or her mother's life insurance policy, like the money she got from it is dwindling down. Like it's going down. She's working two jobs while he's at home all the time working on this battery. Like she's in full support of his dreams. And she's doing this for like quite some time, like years, like fucking years. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I feel like they do give a timeline, which I'll insert it here because I have to go back and see how much time it was that she was doing this. So obviously the relationship is very strained. She stressed out, he stressed out with the battery and stuff. And <clears throat> essentially they get down to their last penny he suggests that they take a mortgage out on the house so like they're they're struggling right now and the house that was like once fine like everything paid off they now have a mortgage that they have to worry about and now they're jeopardizing the house like they're on the verge of losing the house and so he's still trying to get his battery to a particular company and he finds out that diana wells works there and um she's basically like I, you know i can't help you and it is what it is. So he gives her like all of his research or whatever. So now at this point, Diana is reviewing all of his research and stuff. And she's like really impressed and was like, oh shit, this is something that I can present to my boss and we can get it cracking from there. So this is going on. So then um, at this point, he doesn't know this. Like Robert doesn't know this. Basically, he's given up at this point. Robert ends up working for Melinda's sisters or more so her brother-in-laws because their brother-in-laws own a trucking company and so they're like you can work for us and we're gonna figure this out and it'll be fine like they're trying to save the house basically at this point because the only other they're, they're gonna have to give their house up their mom's house by the way that she left for her daughters robert's working for um her brother-in-laws and the brother-in-laws are very empathetic towards him there's one one of her sisters is like on his ass all the time the other sister is like okay we don't have to be harsh with it but he does need to be doing a little bit better like this is fucking ridiculous and in my opinion yes because it's like i and i totally get it, supporting your partner in their dreams and their aspirations but coming down to your last dime a conversation needs to happen well before then and watching your partner work two jobs without like any regard for their physical and mental health and their overall happiness solely for you to pursue a dream is kind of a problem for me it's definitely a goddamn problem for me especially because it was taking such a long time it's like okay like I get it you have your dream in the interim get a goddamn job so you can help your wife because the fact that she put up money for everything everything that he's needed for his career and for his battery I guess you could say everything she she did it like she was like in full support in full support of him you could see why she might be a little frustrated a little irritated with the situation so fast forward Robert um is given a task at the job he's like uh, the brother-in-laws are like, listen, this is a big client for us. You cannot be late for this delivery. You have to, you have to go. Like you have to be there on time and everything. Like one, his one fuck, like this was like extremely fucking crucial. So he's driving, he's stuck in traffic. At this point, him and Diana, as I mentioned, had an interaction where he was trying to like show her his research and stuff. So apparently she left her wallet in his car are in his truck that he's driving the delivery with and one of her one of melinda's sisters finds the wallet sees the name and it's like oh he's cheating on her so he she goes to melinda's job and it's like he's cheating on you and which was kind of like a shit situation like one if i found something like that i would wait at least until my sister got off work and be like hey like let's go get a margarita and have a chat because i found something in your dude's car but she but at this point nothing has happened 
uh, between Robert and Diane and Diana. He's done so in the past. So, you know, it's a real, it's a real sensitive topic. So Melinda is like pissed off. They look on Robert's GPS. Robert is not going to, um, the appointment he's going back to his house to pick up the fucking battery that he threw out because in the middle of the drive he gets a call from diana after doing looking at all his research diana's like oh my god this is really impressive my boss wants to speak with you make a deal so he's like ditching everything to do this which was a very selfish move um because like the the company was riding on this the brother-in-law's company was riding on this everybody was depending on him in this situation and i feel like what he should have done was call his brother in law or call somebody and be like hey pick up the battery meet me at this point and we're swapping out because the appointment that he had to make for the delivery and the meeting time to meet with the boss was at 11 30 they're both at the same time and instead of i would have just been like we're gonna have to cancel we're gonna have to reschedule we're gonna have to do something else because um this isn't gonna work he goes to the meeting they offer him eight hundred thousand dollars for all of his research and the battery and the rights to the battery and everything but that's it and i understand what he's saying i understand he doesn't take the deal and i understand why but like a half-ass deal and so he ends up not taking the deal, comes home to the family, brothers-in-laws, Melinda's sisters, Melinda. And he's like, he's like, they want the battery, but the deal that they gave me was trash. They offered me $800,000. And they were like, you're lying, you're lying. And you didn't take that. Why didn't you take that? Like that could have saved the house and that could have saved us. And so they're like on his ass about it. And then so of course, Melinda at this point is fed up, reasonably so, and asks for a divorce. So they get a divorce, has to live a homeless shelter and he finally all these years all this time in the movie he finally gets a fucking job and he's working at a restaurant diana finds out that he's living in a home she brings him or not brings him but she's like you can stay with me or whatever um like i can't believe she put you out you can stay with me and come to find out the company was willing to make a better deal with him to the point where Mans is now a millionaire. So he pays his wife back, the fa or his ex-wife back, the family back. He pays her $10 million, which honestly, I will call it even at that point. And so the interaction was kind of funny though, because he pulls up at her job. He has a check for her for $10 million and a bouquet of flowers. She doesn't know about the $10 million check though. And it's just how it's written that was like, be for real. Like, I feel like Tyler Perry wanted robert to be the victim so badly that it was ridiculous which it's like it's not to say that robert wasn't robert was the problem i'm sorry i feel like even if even if the roles were reversed even if robert was roberta and melinda was mondo okay and mondo was watching no fuck I, I fucked it up i fucked it up basically if the situations were reversed as far as who was doing what like if it was melinda struggling for years and years and years trying to get something off the ground while her husband was breaking his back trying to support them damn near losing his mom's house and everything like at what point do you say to your partner i need to look after you i need to make sure that you're okay and I need to get you out of this situation. Now, if they got it like that, they got it like that. If you're in a situation financially, we're able to take care of your partner to, you know, sponsor their fucking dreams and shit, then more power to you. I think that's great. I think that's dope. But if the reality of the situation is you're relying solely on somebody else for your financial stability, for you to have a place to rest your head and not only that, but they're breaking their back to do so crazy work. He, he gives her the flowers and the, and the check and he's like i just want to say thank you so much for always believing in me and supporting my dreams and um he then he says something on the lines of i'm sorry that it took me so long which it's like that is like the one thing that i feel like he shouldn't have been sorry for things that are worth having take time they they take work and dedication so it's like i don't think he should have apologized for that i think the apology should have been like look I'm sorry I put you in such a shit financial position. Oh, also, I got to mention, he brought the keys to the mom's house. Like, he was able to, like, save the house. He was apologizing for the wrong thing entirely. Like, I don't think that it was taking so long. It was that he wasn't contributing, one, to the marriage because they stopped sleeping together. They stopped being romantic with each other because he was so focused on this dream. And I feel like whenever you choose to marry somebody, you're actively changing your eyes me's to we's and us 
And I feel like by him um, acting so selfishly in their relationship, the, the it was valid to want to get a divorce. Melinda felt resentful towards her siblings because they were telling her, you know, break up with him. He's now a millionaire. He was able to pay her back financially, right? But then it's like, you have all this other, I guess, I don't want to say trauma surrounding it, but it's like, damn, like giving so much of yourself to somebody only for it to end in divorce. And not only that, so again, it, get, it gets worse. So she's upset with her sisters. She's like, I'm going to go get him back, duh. And so she goes, him, Robert and Diana are now engaged. And this is why I always say you should 100% check your mind, check your heart, check your reasoning before deciding to separate with somebody. I like knowing for sure that like, regardless of what position this person is in later on in life, I'm going to be healed and I'm going to be okay. Like, and if somebody was in a relationship with me where they took advantage and they were an asshole to me and I see them in a relationship treating um, their new individual or their new partner respectfully in the way that I wanted to be treated I'm gonna be happy for the girl that she got the best version of him because I, I just can't imagine ever thinking that somebody would change for me not like in in that type of way but like have you heard the saying if he wanted to he would like I just feel like that's cool if he's not gonna do it for me that's great we're no longer together that is no longer my problem we've ended here my story our story ends right here anything that happens after that is none of my goddamn business and i don't feel any towards resentment or i'm not upset about it i've removed myself from the situation it's fine it's over it's cool uh, but i do understand melinda's frustration in seeing her husband after she spent all that time supporting him in his dreams only for him to end up with somebody else and not only that but the person that he cheated on her with so long ago I understand that he was like in a shit financial position but he was acting very selfishly in his marriage putting your wife in a position compromising your marriage for a dream that you have it's a shit thing to do and that's why I always say like you need to have your shit somewhat together or at least be able to be considerate of your partner enough to say, okay, like, I know I want to pursue this dream and I know it's not possible. It would, he wouldn't even have touched his fucking dream if Melinda wasn't in the picture. And I get that he repaid her financially, but as a husband, he did not do that shit. He was not looking out for her as a husband. He, she literally loaned him money and he paid her back. She made an investment and it got paid back financially. But because she did love Robert, I feel like there was still some sort of emptiness that she had given the reason that they divorced so she ends up going crazy which is like like I said I understand why she's upset but I don't condone anything that she does she ends up stalking them they end up getting married she's like trying to sabotage the wedding and stuff she goes and essentially is like this is all your fault she's living the life that I wanted and he's like you divorced me and I was like that irritated me as well too because I'm like I don't know if you've ever been in a position where a, a relationship is no longer suiting you and there are problems in the relationship that could be fixed. However, the partner that you're with isn't willing to put in that work to have it fixed. So you have to be the one to delegate and say, I have to leave. And it looks like you're the problem because you're the one ending the relationship, but really they're the problem because they weren't willing to put in the work to fix the problem. And I feel like that was a situation here because like it wasn't that his dream took too long to achieve. I mean, it's like it would have been nice if he got it fixed before they had to give up the house. It was the fact that he was moving with no regard to his wife and his marriage. He was living his life on her tab with no regard to her. Like her buying him a car and him cheating is crazy. That's like actually fucking insane. And not only that, but you see your wife struggling, working two jobs. She's working a job during the day, working a job at night just to make ends meet, barely make ends meet. And it doesn't occur to you once like, okay, let me also get a job. Let me do a part-time situation so I can at least bring some money in to alleviate some of this off of her. It stuns me because I'm like, what is it? What was the takeaway supposed to be? Hold a man down long enough until he achieves his goals. And it's like that supporting your partner in their dreams and helping your partner when they're down bad is not the problem in this situation. The problem is that Robert was moving like he was still single. 
like after he cheated the first time i'll admit he didn't do it again but it's just like there are other things that go into a marriage besides loyalty loyalty is extremely important but also your your marriage your partner y'all are a team y'all need to look after each other she was looking after him hard as fuck making sure that he had everything that he needed for his battery making sure that he had a roof over his head bought him a car at some point in their their early days and what was he doing for her and it's like she was like filling his cup for sure and it's like if you're filling if she's busy filling his cup it's supposed to be a back and forth thing where you're filling each other's cups. Like, all right, you're down bad. Here, here's some, here's a little bit from my cup. I'm down bad. Okay, like you, you go back and forth. You take care of each other. And he was not taking care of her. Her cup was empty. She was, she's running on fumes now. There's imaginary liquids going into his cup, imaginary matter going into his cup. And meanwhile, she's just like, she's like damn like what the fuck like they weren't an actual marriage it was so strained by the financial situation it was so strained by all of that previous pain where there was no getting past it and essentially at the end of the movie melinda dies but i thought for a moment i was like there's no way that the takeaway was stick with your man long enough to hold him down like that should not have been the takeaway here because I feel like Melinda was validated in wanting a divorce because that's a lot to unpack, you know? And I also feel that it would have been fine for Robert to move on from that, but it was just kind of shit because what was she left with at the end of the day? You know what I mean? And but like I said, the fact that he paid her back, if he would have paid me back tenfold, I would have shut the hell up. I would have been like, you still got me fucked up emotionally, but at least you don't have me emotionally and financially fucked up. I'm going to use the $10 million you gave me and go to therapy to figure this shit the fuck out. Enjoy your marriage and left it at that, honestly, because like I acknowledge any time that I've ended a relationship, I 100% acknowledge and 100% make peace before I even before I even er utter the words I want to break up. I make peace with with the fact that okay me and this person will no longer be in a relationship which means they can do whatever they want outside of anything that we have we stop right here so if I see them years from now and they're a cachillionaire and they're spoiling their wife and all of that all I can do is be happy that somebody got the best version of him and did not have to put up with the shit that I did and I'm, I, I have to make peace with that and that is what it is I'm not gonna feel resentment or acrimony um because of that decision that's why i never make impulse decisions when it comes to determining whether i want to stay in a relationship or not i think long and hard about it before i'm like i can't bet on what's gonna happen in the fucking future i can't bet on you know what i mean i could die tomorrow anybody anybody could just you know what i mean like, you know you don't really know so it's like i'm not gonna bet on years and years and years from now where things may look a little different or this person may be different i can't i i can only move how i'm going to move i can only bet on me and bet on how i treat people and how i make decisions and how i love i cannot rely on somebody else to change themselves to be something that I need them to be in a relationship. I can't, and I fully accept that. And I feel like that was a good takeaway um, from the movie is like, you can't you can't carry that type of, that type of resentment with you because, and I seen that there's this video of this lady and this lady was uh, talking about how her husband never took her on trips and then he remarries and takes his new wife on trips. And it's like, this is what I mean where it's like, if you know what you want, you know what I mean? There are compromises and stuff too, but it's like, I can't be mad at that. Like it is, I understand where the frustration comes from, but I'm just like, I'm, I'm not going to feel any sort of jealousy because that situation wasn't meant for me. He wasn't going to do that for me. So it's like, it's up to me to find somebody who is going to love me the way that I want them to love me. But that situation was flat out cold because it's like, damn, like, what and this is why I feel like that also was very telling about men who settle too I can't say if this is a situation um but I feel like it's comparable where men settle in relationships and they do not even the bare minimum sometimes and they kind of carry resentment towards their partner because they're not who they want them to be but they're settling for a woman that they don't necessarily want 
and then they kind of just wait until they do find what they do want and then then they treat them like okay bet because i there i feel like there's no excuse i feel like every man knows how to treat a woman like it's not it's not it's not anything that should be shocking but it's like i feel like they're not willing to do it unless it's with a woman that they actually want to be with i feel like women are the same way hell i'm the same way but the difference is is i'm not going to be in a relationship with somebody that i don't want to be in i'm only gonna do that shit for the person that i'm with and i guarantee you i'm not going to be with somebody that i don't want to be with i'm not there's no for me there's no placements or no standby if i'm with you i'm with you i'm in it and you're gonna get the full package honey bunny but i'm not gonna sit there and be like oh, i'm not i'm with him he's my boyfriend or he's my fiance or, or he's my husband but like he's not who i want to be with so no i'm not gonna do all this extra shit for him but that's just me though um but yes that's all that i have for you today i hope you have a wonderful day a wonderful afternoon a morning an evening a, a september i hope your september's going well i hope whatever region you're in what area you're in it's not 90 fucking degrees outside you know i'm trying to get into the you know i want to watch my my fall shit i want to feel spooky i want to watch some twilight but i can't because it's 90 degrees outside but okay bye